Oh. Hey, Jack, you back home. She's gonna kill you. Jack, you daft bugger. I'll arrest as mad as hell are you skipping off Christmas Day. I don't know you dare. Come on, it will go then, or not. Uh, get... We need the money. Uh... Tell you what, give us a sub and I'll uh, get us some flowers, eh? How's about ten bob, eh? I have got it. Here you go. What? Do you know, that last she'll be cleaning up for you coming home. I don't know why she bothers. Get you sent home to her. Thanks, Lou. No. Don't get married, girl, just sign away your life. You may start off as a woman, but you'll end up as a wife. You can be a best of virgin, take the veil of me alone. But don't get married, girl, for marriage isn't fun. Oh, it's fine when he's romancing and he plays a lover's part. You're the roses in his garden, you're the flame that warms his heart. And his love will last forever, and he'll promise you the moon. But just wait until you're wedded and you'll sing a different tune. You're his tapioca pudding, you're the dumpling in his stew. And he'll soon begin to wonder why you never do. Don't get married, girl, for marriage isn't fun. Solutions in. Where? A few hours now. Bugger. Wonder where he's got to then. Where do you think? <laughs> to see this weather. Don't fuss us, Mum. Well, all right, I've got you some new dry socks there. I mean, you know, when you get wet, you put the dry ones on, yeah? It'll be all right, Mum. I'll be in the galley mostly. Aye, and don't you get up to mischief there, either. Michael, you're not forced to go, you know. There's still time to change your mind. Oh, give up, will you? You've been at us for weeks. I'm going. All right. Just saying, that's all. It's the Ross Cleveland, yeah? You're supposed to get married in five weeks. I'll be back in three. I've got the dress and everything. You best be. I will. And you promise? Oh, I promise you, Shell, that I'd give up the sea after we're married and I will. Oh, do you have to go? You said you'd be a poor catch this time. Oh, love, just this last one, eh? Morris and me will be a laugh. But it's so rough. We've had terrible storms. All the men have been moaning about yeah, it. Yeah, I know, love. But you know me. I'll just sing my way through any storm. I'll be fine. Just this last one, eh? Will you miss me? Nah, of course not. Swan. Yeah, I'll miss you loads. But I've got to go. Self-service thing has started. Well, it's America. I don't care what it is. It's express service. I don't want express service. I'm in no hurry. 
Where the hell do they think I'm going? I should need express service. Do we pay more for express service? I bought some tea bags the other day and it was so weak you needed crutches. Fortnite tea. You are? Two weeks. Oh, God, hey. Joyce, that's <laughs> awful. Two weeks. <laughs> Christ! Haven't you seen it? It's headlines. What's up? It's missing. The Romanus. Oh, no. It says so, yeah. Oh, Jesus, no. How do they mean missing? They don't know where it is. Iceland, Norway, the Angora Clue. It's been two weeks since they heard anything. Two weeks? Don't be daft, it can't be. That's what it says. Last radio contact, Thursday the 11th of January. That's two weeks. That's oh. disgusting. How come we don't know? We have to read it in the paper. Do they think she's gone? It doesn't say. Maybe the radio's down. Oh, I can't bear this. Well, look, if the radio's down and they've got good fishing, they're not going to sell any more than 50 miles just to tell someone we're safe, are they? We should have heard sooner. I hate this. How come we haven't heard? Beats me. Well, it shouldn't surprise us this way. What do you mean? Heather, you shouldn't say that. Well, come on. We've still done anything yet. Not for sure. How? Oh, your dad's out there. Yeah, Trevor's out there. What's it doing with us, Cleveland? No, oh, Michael, it's his first trip. There's no radio operator. What do you mean? They haven't got a bloody spark. There's no one to fix the radio. They found a life raft. I'll do it, I'll do it away, no more. They say it's from the Romanus. How would they know? They're all numbered, they check. They check the number. God, I feel sick. Well, this is the worst weather since. Who knows when? I shouldn't be sending them out. Not by rights in this. Look, Sheriff's on the bus, Cleveland. Shut up, will you ever? No, no, I don't mean that. I mean, in weather like this, lifeboats get washed overboard. That's all it'll be. The radio's out and the lifeboat's been washed overboard. You know, we're the best sailors in the world, Pat. They're not going to want you worried, are they? I thought you said he won't go anymore. It's going to be his last trip. Oh, come on, love. Don't take it like that. No! No! I mean, he promised it'd be his last trip. No, right, to see what you mean. Well... That's good, isn't it? Well, I'm going on. We should be doing something about this. What do you mean, Brother Ross Cleveland? He peer it jumped. He must have heard I was after him. No. He's just bloody daft. What did he want to go and do that for? Gone in less than 24 hours of going home. How dare he do that to us? Well, it's you going on to him all, of, all the time about having no money. Cos he drunk his money with a little help. Whether a man has sunk. I'm going to go at my head with worry now. Twenty men, Christ. I know, but it ain't sunk till we've had it sunk. It, it's still just missing. Well, it don't surprise me. Them ships are just buckets. Owners don't care. That's very helpful. That up. weather out there, it's, it's dreadful. It's shocking. Very helpful, thanks, Ernest. Thank you. Well, I've heard stories. Stories? You're... Stories? Wait till we know. No, the lads had time at home to do nought about it. Not about anything. The weather, safety, food, anything at all. They're not here enough to do out about it, so therefore it's time we did. It's time we stick our necks out and do something about it. Petition, lasses. Get it spread around. Get people to sign it. Ask them about safety. I mean, there's more on what I thought of needs to be done, and if anybody's got any suggestions, you've got to listen, lasses, you know. Listen to anything. Everybody in here, if you can, please help these lads because they're worth it. Now, come on, lasses, get these petitions moving. Please, would you take a petition and sign it? Or even take one to get your own signatures for us? Thank you. Everyone in here, if you can, please help these lads. We want immediately no sailing without full crews. They have no radio operator on the Romanus. Well, there's a lot more demands need to be made and a lot more that needs doing, but the petition's a start.
He was on the Kingston Perry Dock. The Kingston Perry Dock, yes. Uh, we're from the Fisherman's Bethel. May we speak with you for a moment? I'm sorry to have to tell you the Kingston Perry Dock is lost. There are no survivors. No, no, it's a St. Romanus that's been missing. You're making a terrible mistake. I'm afraid we're not wrong. The St. Romanus is now confirmed lost, but the Kingston Perry Dock also. Two trawlers? I'm afraid so. Your thought? Yes, I, I understand. Would you like to pray? What? Um, no, no, I don't think so. No. God looks after us, you know. Does he? Oh, Father, we shout in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I feel silly. Done. Don't you pray. Give me a way. Yes, I can accept that. You are very young. What's that got to do oh, with it? For God's sake, what do you know about it? Have you ever been to sea? Uh, no, but... Well, how can you stand there and talk about it then? As if you know what you're talking about. All right, Catherine, it's well. Oh, Catherine, Dad, what am I going to do? Mrs. Bullocker, 
What's the feeling amongst the wives about this whole affair? These two missing trawlers? Well, what do you think? Hmm? I mean, it's terrible. I can't describe it. You've got to be in there, in the house, among these men and these women and these young people to know, to really understand what it's all about. The feeling. What sort of hardships are they having to bear? The people who've lost a member of their family? Good God, woman. They've lost the person they love. They're losing the backbone of their household. And how are they going to feed the kids if they've got a house full of little ones? Oh, it's scary. Have you any family at sea? Of course I have, love, a lot. Like all of these people here. Husband, father, uncle, nephews, cousins, lords and neighbours, the lot. Do you think this petition, with about the names of 600 fishermen's wives, will achieve anything? Well, it has to, doesn't it? Everybody I come into contact with, everybody, reporters and all, everybody, union people and just ordinary general people, they're not going to let this drop. And I certainly aren't, mister, I certainly aren't. The fishermen's wives are incensed and have threatened to organise a strike unless something's done to improve safety on trawlers. Do you think you ought to organise a strike if nothing's done? I do, definitely. And what's your main complaint about the way the whole affair's been handled so far? Well, they've waited long enough. There's plenty of lives being lost before they're doing something about it. Are you really serious about getting your husbands to go on strike? Yes, we are. We're very serious. Because if we don't get anything done, we're definitely going to march down the dock on Monday. We're going to confront the owners ourselves. Bloody disgraceful. Them women encouraging them scavenging reporters, lapping it up. You'd think it were Hollywood or something the way they're all carrying on. They're all bloody starstruck. Have you quite finished? No. Make us a cup of tea. You're turning us into a circus. That thought of men gone, Dad. Don't you know what's happening? What they do, Cal? They were my mates. Bloody good mates, some of them. But men can speak for themselves, can't they? They don't need the women for poking the nose in where it's not wanted. But you're always going about something. Oh, so big little shouting a mouth off, eh? <laughs> a mouth as big as duck gates is all right by you, is it? Someone's got to do something and take some action, take some initiative, and instead of sitting on your ass, her ass mumbling. And she's not the only one. Well, I've heard she wants to stop wintertime fishing. Aye, that's right. But that's what she's got on this bit of paper that she's getting people to sign. In rough weather, yeah. Seems sensible to me. And it is a bit of paper. It's a six-point charter. Listen, if we don't fish, we don't eat. It's as simple as that, isn't it? Men know the risk, don't they? I mean, God help you, woman. You'll be doing men out of their livings. Show some respect. I've heard some women say that. Well, they're wrong. Women are speaking out against things that are wrong and they've got that big meeting tonight. And if I get a chance to put my bit of it, I'm going to tell them I'm with them. I've never followed me all conscience. All my life I've been doing what others say. Well, it's my turn now. Well, you couldn't stand up and make yourself understood by a bunch of kids. You don't know till you try. Look, you're all just going on about safety precautions on trawlers. What are you going to tell these women anyway? I'll tell them. Well, the, the land was ours before we were the lands and the sea all that was ours before we became trawler owners property which is what we are and I'll tell them owners are getting rich of our men's dead bodies What's she talking about? I'm talking about history What the hell does she know about history? I know something about history I know when I'm being threatened and stop talking about me as if I'm not here Well you're not going Make us a cup of tea No Get it yourself. I'm on strike. What do you mean? I mean, you'll get no nothing till you start talking sense and supporting us in some way. You'll get no tea, you'll get no nothing. If you want it, get it. Don't talk daft. I'm up to the meeting. Hey. Hey, Loretta, Lily, Mary. Me too. Hey. I'll woo you back. You'll see later. All right, lasses. All right, can you just listen up a minute, please? Right. Jack Ashwell here.
is the union's fishing officer on St Andrew's dock. And as we don't quite know what to do here, he's agreed to just conduct the meeting, you know, just sort of kick things off, like. Mr Ashwell. Right, I want to keep things here brief. I'm grateful to be asked to chair this meeting. But I think it's you women here who should do the leading. I want to hear what you have to say before we do anything else. This is your meeting. And I just think if you've got anything to say, you should just get up here and say it. And we'll do our best to answer any questions you've got. Well, I want to say something. I'm here because my lad's here. Lad's at sea right now. And I don't know what needs to be done. I don't even know what's wrong with the trawlers. But there's got to be something wrong with two in a row. And I want to know what we can do about it. My Harry was on the Kingston Peridot. What can I say but getting up here ain't easy. Look at these women here. Someone has lost somebody at sea. And I'd be hard pressed to point to someone that hasn't lost someone at sea over the years. But you'll be thinking it won't happen to you. But it does happen to you. These trawlers need a lot to be done, what should have been done. But the men ain't here long enough. Anyway, fishermen take everything in their strides. And it's those women that pay the price too. Well, I don't want to say much either. Like Jack, I think that now's the time for you to be saying what you feel. But I want to pledge not only my support, but the support of the National Union of Seamen. <laughs> seamen and trawlermen have been treated as second-class citizens for far too long. Yeah. Trawler owners come out of the same mould as ship owners. So we in the Union know what it is that you're up against. Well, that's the problem, you see. Fishermen aren't home long enough to get themselves organised, and this is something the owners depend upon to keep the men where they want them. So you women taking this initiative is the best thing that can happen, and we want to support your campaign in whatever way we can. Trawlers from sailing if they're not safe because they can't sack us. Mm -hmm. You could still be costing men the job. Yeah. I'd yeah, rather jeopardise men's jobs than watch earners jeopardise their lives. Yeah. 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 We won't change anything unless there's women here do something. Fishermen's wives have been silent too long. Yeah. 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 Change things by luck. Yes. yes. Our MPs here, just what is he doing? Yeah, well, I'd like to welcome Mr Johnson, who, as well as being MP for West Hull, is also chairman of the Council for European Fisheries Committee. Mr. Johnson. Thank you. I'm here specifically to collect facts for a Board of Trade meeting on Monday. I am intensely shocked by the toll of men that the sea has taken in very dangerous Arctic waters. Of course it's absolutely imperative that a Board of Trade official should be on the fish docks to check life rafts, life jackets and other vital gear before the ships leave the port. But it should also be remembered that the British trawlers are amongst the safest in Europe. Coffins! Them trawlers! The coffins! Men are going to see in their own coffins! I'm talking design. What is lacking? What is lacking is proper safety measures being taken. I am examining complaints that an Icelandic trawler failed to report and act quickly on a distress signal. Our own signalling equipment's inadequate. 
I can assure you all that I will take whatever action is possible and I'm sure the government will, will take statutory powers to ensure that those trawlers with wireless operators report regularly. What's the point of that if there are no radio operators and the equipment's lousy? Radios got to work off batteries for a start, independent of engines and generators, and there's a lot more. There's not a woman here hasn't lain awake at night thinking about what's to be done, worried sick, out of their minds. We, we've got our hospital ships and detonated operated flares and trawlers should be painted in luminous paint. There must be something scientists can come up with to melt the black ice. What makes trawlers so top heavy they turn over? I mean, they do it for aircraft, don't they? Yeah. What are we living in? The 20th century or the Dark Ages? <laughs> the ACG is vital. They're just out there chipping by hand. Men shouldn't have to be out there breaking off ice with spanners. They don't have full crews. Well, we'll make them listen. We should all go down the docks and sit on the floor. Yeah. 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 You can't have women down on the docks when men are sailing. That's I've never right. heard such a thing. And men wouldn't thank you for it. No. Oh, well, I'm prepared to try anything. No. No. Not that. Okay. So we won't have no backlash or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jail if I have to, if it's going to save these lads' lives. There is only one way to make these people see us, and that woman is by taking action. I pack my bag, I'll board any trawler in this country to stop it sailing if they're not safe. That's not the way. She said, none of us women can sleep for thinking about things. I was thinking last night about them strollers out there and about the snow and the ice building up on them. Lying there, I could see plain as your faces one of those enormous trawlers, and it was covered in snow and ice. I knew snow and ice was falling on it. And I watched as the snow began to build up on the mast and on the bridge and on the whale back. A big heavy trawler, that must be the size of three terrace houses, wouldn't you say? I could hear the ship creaking under the weight of all that ice. Great lumps of metal under stress. And finally that great ship turned, turned its enormous weight right over, driven there by the collective weight of all that snow and ice. And as I watched that happen, I realised something amazing had just taken place, that millions of ice crystals had fallen and dropped on that ship and had turned that enormous weight, which was thousands and thousands of times bigger and stronger than any one of those ice crystals. But each one had done its share. That's all they did. Each one dropped and together, collectively, they were able to turn that enormous weight. Anyway, it seems to me the question we should be asking is what it means to us as individuals, as human beings like, to do our share, nothing more, nothing less. It's a question no one but yourself can answer. And if there's anyone in this hall, just try to tell you, get out. Because if there's someone can lead you to the gates of heaven, then just as well easily lead you to the gates of hell. No. The question's yours alone, and you have a responsibility to ask it. If you go down on the dock, it's because you believe everything's worth trying. And if you don't go down on the dock, it's because it's against your beliefs and traditions, and it's disrespectful to the men. You must know your own hearts, lasses. What's the right thing for yourself? Then whatever you do, you're doing it for the same cause. I've been listening to what you women here have been saying and I've been thinking. We have a meeting on Tuesday at Westminster. 
the unions and the ministers. And I'm going to arrange for some of you women here to go down and see the ministers themselves and say the things you've been saying here to them in your own way. You just tell me who and I'll arrange it. We've all got a different way of doing things, yeah? yeah? We've all got to agree it's the owners we've got to tackle. Yeah. Well, I propose we go down there now and see them right now while we're all together and in the mood for it. If we mean business, let's do it now! Something's happened! They won't see us. Owners, they've refused to see us. The people in the office phoned the two firms, but they wouldn't come. We've told them we're determined they're going to meet us face to face on this. Yeah, we told them we'll fight them on this to the end. We told them you women weren't giving in. Not this time, not on this one. Well, we're not a radio operator. Come on, off in. We don't want the trouble. All right, well, don't give us any. Where's your radio operator then? Come coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been going on for years, Mrs. Where have you been? Aye, well, it isn't any longer. You're out to land, lady. Aren't you worried about safety? You're bringing us bad luck, lady, seeing us yeah. off. Top. We are seeing you off. We're stopping you yeah. going. The hell you are. Tell us how many life jackets. 14. Shut it. 14. And 20 men. Are you sharing them? And how many ricks? We aren't legally obliged to replace them until 1970. Oh. Oh. It's not for two years. Bloody hell. Wash your mouth out, lad, there's ladies present. Aye, well, we can all out swear, you buggers. Don't worry about it, lad. What if we have to swim for it, Skipper? Oh, lad, the cold would kill you. The women have a point, Skipper. Last trip, we had three fire extinguishers empty. You're really sailing in that. It's a bloody rusty coffin. It might be old, lady, but it's safe. It hasn't sunk yet. Oh, my yeah. bad yeah. judgment, mate. You can't expect a ship as old as this to come up to the standards of a new one. Why not? Yes. Come on, lads, we've got to get out. Let's go. And you ready, operator? We're going to meet him in the river. Oh, I kill you, Opening early, love. Well, you've got to look good for seeing the earners. We've all got to do our bit. Getting to see them's a feather in your cap. I don't understand why you didn't get to see them before. Things too hard, aren't they? Aye. I'm ever so sorry, Chris. What about? About your Phil. What about Phil? Aren't you heard? She heard what? The ship's been missing. It's all over the news. Oh, I've got to go home. I've just got to go, all right. You want to The owners will see us. We're winning. Is it, Mum? It's Jack. What? what? Well, well, all we know is a third troll are missing. On the news. You say it's Ross Cleveland. Well, well, yes, but but just that it's missing could mean anything. Why don't they tell us nothing? 
Why have we got to find out like this? Just guessing. Oh, Mum, not Jacko. We made him go. It's all my fault. No. It is. It's all my fault. Oh, Mum, it's too awful to think about. Theresa, is it true? We don't know. We just know it's missing. Chris, you've got to carry on. Carry on with what you're doing. You've got to go meet the owners. I can't now. We don't know nothing for certain yet. And anyway, nothing should stop you. Not now. Not now you're getting so far, you'll get down to the offices. Mrs. Malocca, do you think today's disaster could be prevented? I don't know, love. I don't know. I don't know anything, except they haven't had any news from it. That's all I know. And what attitude will you be taking to the owners when you meet them in a minute? Please, eh, love, not now, if you don't mind. And Christine Smallbone, whose brother was on the Ross Cleveland, will she be going with Look, you? Look, love, not now, eh, please. Jack, Mrs. Belocker, I recognise. Please, if you would, sit down. A cup of coffee? Yes, good. Uh, coffee, couldn't we have uh, six coffees? Well, I, I'd like to... No, I'd like... No, please. What's happened to the Ross Cleveland? I'm afraid I can only confirm its loss. And my brother? Your brother? Philip Gay is the skipper. Miss Gay, Miss Gay, I'm sorry, there are no reports of survivors at the present time. Sending them out like this. The weather is particularly freakish at the moment. And I understand you, you are feeling... Then why are you sending them out? Our We're men are going to sea and getting drowned. This is going to happen. But they deserve a better chance than they get now. We'd like to give them a better chance. The weather is particularly freakish right now. I remember in 43 and the disaster of Laurel and Rodrigo in 55. Weather just like this. It seems to be a cycle. You mustn't send them. It's three trawlers now. It's time you close that North Cape. You're upset, Miss Gay. Small bone! The name's Smallbone, and I'm upset, of course I'm upset, and I'm angry. Yeah, now I know everybody, that knows somebody feels like. Let's just look at you. Look, you've grown fat and rich and prosperous on the blood, sweat and tears of the salt of the earth. But it's greed, isn't it? Damn my bloody greed. Well, it'll be your downfall, cos we're already on our knees. Look, would you like to come back with I understand it's a very emotional time. Emotional? You don't know the half of it, love. You're not getting posh words from us whenever you speak to us. Look, we're not asking, we're demanding. Now, you can stop sending me out in these conditions, and I mean, like, now, you can just... Up it now! We just need change and we need help. We want to help. It ain't coming quick enough, is it? This has been going on for years. Hundreds and hundreds of years. It's been the livelihood of both my parents, brothers, grandfather, way back, right across the family. You haven't done much to help any of them yet. How long are you going to take? Look, no more vessels will go to the west coast of Iceland until this weather abates. I'll give instructions, no more vessels to go till this is all over. And uh, I'll do that now, immediately. Thank you. 
thank God. Go now, if you don't mind. Do you want us to come, love? All right. I'll go with it. Well done, love, well done. Now, what about safety? to oversee safety of all trawlers. And that means ships get inspected every trip. And not just twice a year, is it, Adam? Yeah, been? and there's immediate implementation of a three-point safety plan. There's to be no sailing off North Coast till the bad weather's over. No trawler has to sail without a radio operator, and trawlers have to report every 12 hours. And that means from now, from this minute, I'm standing here. <laughs> and the whole industry. <laughs> they, knew, they knew we weren't going to be put off and by God we weren't. We weren't going to let them out of there till we'd said everything we wanted to say. We should always be able to say, I feel proud about what I've achieved here today. Always know we've achieved something in our lives. Well, we've campaigned all of us here together. We've drawn the whole country's attention to what the owners have been getting away with, yeah. Well, they're not going to be able to get away with it anymore, because we're watching. The whole country's watching. We've done all right, but don't think it's over yet. Now, nah, because there's still a lot to fight for. There's a lot that's bloody wrong. But everything went off lovely, and we're all united. We've made a breakthrough, us wives. Do you know what that means? Hey, and they went off to chase another story, and the lights faded on them. And there were sad feelings. The feelings of the men in the winter time band. They said we'd shake on and fight in their battles. They said that we women didn't know what we were talking about. Stupid women. But you can't put money before lives. You can't skimp on safety. It's too costly. We need change. Change for the better. what comes into my head and I bash it all around and here I am. I just won't go to sit, sit back and accept defeat. And you know, I want the only one to get eight mil. All anonymous. All of it, all postmarks. I know I talk rough. I'm not going to change my ways. I'm not a clever woman. But I'll tell you something, I will do it again. 